Hey guys, this is Hayden Chance. I thought, since you guys responded very well to the last videos, that there's some basics that people seem to be wanting to learn that um, evidently no one's talking about. So I thought I'd talk about some of those things. Um, I got a crystal ball here, and this is actually a video on how to scry using a crystal ball. Um, uh, this one is just, it's a quartz, it's a small quartz crystal ball. I got it years ago. Um, I use a napkin ring like this to set it in, you know. Um, people like to complicate this things and uh, the process of scrying, they, like, they really like to complicate it. And um, it's really a lot simpler than people make it. And uh, this one, I mean, they get all crazy about what to use. You can use a ball, you can use a ball, you can use an obelisk, you can use a crystal, um, you can use your your fingernail to scry in, you can use a black mirror, you can use a bowl of water, you can use a cup of, you can scry into a cup of coffee. Um, I once uh, read for someone at a um, at a restaurant in a cup of Coca Cola. So. It, it is the, the scrying is really, I mean, the, the, the object is used to put yourself in a trance. It's used to put you to get you beyond the neocortex and to get you down into your subconscious to be able to read from that place. You cannot scry from your neocortex. So if you think that you're going to read a crystal ball and you're going to start to get words and things in um, uh, the way that you normally do, when you're thinking or you're rationalizing or you're using your rational mind, it's not going to work. You're not, it's, it, you're never, ever, ever going to be able to scry effectively that way. So movies and books and things have done a disservice that way. Um, this one has all these inclusions in it. People get really weird about it. I have to have a pure, clear crystal ball. I have a glass one that has nothing, no inclusions in it, and it doesn't work half as well as the one with the inclusions. The inclusions kind of make me go tipsy when I look into them. You know, I kind of... They, the inclusions start to form into things once I go in. Okay, so what you do, you take your object that you're going to scry into, like this one, and then, um, so someone will probably come and ask you a question, or they'll come for a reading or whatever. And then you just, you want to, you want to sort of focus into it gently, okay, and you want to breathe. You want to focus on your breathing. You want to keep your breathing nice and even slow it down you're going to probably slow yourself down to the alpha state to do this okay so that means you're not going to have all that chatter going on if you got all that chatter going on in your mind you're not you're not going to get anything okay you want to uh i i have a lot of practice doing this so it take it, i can go very fast um and then what's going to happen is you're going to start to get pictures images feelings sensations sounds things like that this is the most important thing about uh, scrying in a crystal ball that no one's going to tell you. You are going to be talking to your subconscious, so it's going to be your language. So all of the images, all of the symbols, all of the stuff that comes to you is going to be coming to you from your own subconscious. It's going to be a language that you have that is specific to you. So that, you know, let's say that you see a rabbit. Well, someone over here might say that a rabbit means fertility. And someone over here may say that a rabbit means luck or you know, whatever. But you have to understand that it's like your dreams, your subconscious is going to be talking to you. So what does a rabbit indicate to you? Okay. So um, what you do with the images once you get them is up to you. I mean, you, you, you have to develop your own process of them. I usually have the person that I'm scrying for write down everything I'm seeing. I say, write down everything, everything that comes out of my mouth, write it down. And then I take the piece of paper back and then I tell them what everything means to their lives. Okay. So, um, so I'll say something like, you know, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a tree on fire in the middle of an apartment and there's a window out and outside the window, there's a boy on a skateboard, you know, things like that. I'll tell them everything and then I'll go back and I'll read through it and I'll tell them what everything means in their life. And I'll interpret what everything means because the language that's coming out is my language. So the basic process is, you want to take the ball, you want to focus gently on it. You don't want to, you know, you want to do this because yeah, you're, you're going to, and, and try real hard. You're going to be engaging your neocortex and you're not going to get anything. You want to go beyond your neocortex. So you want to just gently keep breathing, gaze into it. 
until you start getting pictures in your mind. Images, thoughts, sensations, feelings. You may get a feeling in some part of your body. You may get an image. Um, you know, you may see something emerge. You have to play with it and practice and copy down the images that you get. Look and observe what those images are translating into in your life because that's going to be how you understand what your own language is. Okay. So it's really very simple. People like to complicate it. It doesn't matter what you, like I said, I have a smoky one that's a obelisk that I can scry into or you can scry into a little amethyst, whatever, whatever works for you. Don't get hung up on the ball. If you're spending your whole time trying to get hung up on the object you're scrying into, you're not, you're not a scryer. You know, you're, you're a collector. That's the difference. People get so hung up on the tools. Um, this, uh, I found this a long time ago. It wasn't expensive. It wasn't big. It wasn't flashy. It was just the tool that I wanted to use to be able to look into and put it into. It fit easy on a table if I was working with other things. So, um, and it served me very well. Okay. I don't, sage it. I don't put it in the moon. I don't do any of those things. I don't wash it in, you know. Um, so there's all this stuff people like to do to get hung up on the thing. And when you're getting hung up on the thing, again, you're not a scryer. You're not, you're not a reader. You're a collector. Okay. So remember that getting the information, getting it accurately, getting practical information, getting it simply and straightforward in a straightforward manner is the goal. If it's about the tools and you want to get this crystal ball or that crystal ball or that deck or that deck, you're, you've lost sight of the whole purpose. You might as well just, you know, uh, be a collector of stuff and that's, which is fine, but it's not the same thing. Okay. Um, this is really neat because it teaches you how your own symbolic language works, what symbols mean what to you, and it gets you more in touch with your own intuition. Um, so you Get a, get a ball or a crystal or something and start playing with it. Or even if you don't have it, don't worry about it. Use a bowl of water, a little bowl of water. You can use a black cup. It, sometimes black helps because uh, it helps. It's deep. It seems deeper. Helps you to trance out. And then you know, there's the other thing too is, and this is for those of you who know hyp hypnosis, you have to be careful that you don't get off on the trance, become addicted to trance. There are a lot of people out there who get addicted to trancing themselves out and then they don't see anything. Okay. So, um, a lot of times too, people want something to happen. They get themselves into a trance. They get all the significant stuff that's sort of self-serving and then they see themselves. Well, I saw myself being visited by angels and surrounded by all of this and bursting into flames. And I had all this power, which is great. But if you're not seeing a corollary in your own life, then you're bullshitting yourself through your subconscious. Okay. So, <laughs> the delusion runs deep. Okay. So, uh, so if you know, you're deluding yourself into believing that you're this all powerful being when you're looking into the crystal ball and you look around your life and you, you know, you can't pay your rent and, and you hate your, your life and your relationships suck and you're depressed all the time, then you're probably bullshitting yourself through the, the through the crystal ball and you're using the trance and the ball as a method to continue to bullshit yourself. You don't want to do that. You want, you want to look for practical information, practical, um, uh, images, how they translate into your life, how they translate into the world around you. Take it, relax, gaze into it. Deep in your breathing, try to deep, uh, try to breathe from your ab abdomen. Feel your heartbeat lower and go steady. And if you if you deep, if you breathe deeply and calmly, your heartbeat will slow down. Gaze into it and start to see what images emerge. For example, right now I'm seeing snow. at night, moonlight, a moon. So I would say, okay, so we got snow. So it would be like an ending of a dark time and the beginning of new light starting to emerge. Perhaps you might say that. Okay. I didn't ask a question and I wasn't really reading for someone. I also find that 
when I really do um, the best is when I'm actually engaging with someone else. I'm reading for them. And that's something that I don't think people, um, I don't think people pay attention to enough is when you read for someone else, something else happens, something takes over. When you're constantly reading for yourself, you get in this tiny little loop. It's like the Ouroboros, the, Aurobor the snake swallowing its own tail. Um, you get, when we just read for ourselves over and over and over and over again, and we don't read for other people, we're, we're not really serving any purpose, but self-serving stuff. The more that you come out and you read for other people and you start to engage with other people, the more your skills start to develop. Something happens between the two of you. There's an agreement and you have to have a curiosity and a, and a genuine desire to help the individual sitting in front of you. And then something starts to open up. You get out of your own way then. So really all the crystal ball is here to help you do is to get out of your own way, to get out of your neocortex, to go into a deeper place where you can actually get impressions and get uh, psychic visions. And, um, it's just a tool. It's not the end all be all. The power is not in the ball. Okay. So I hope this helped. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll do my best to answer them and uh, go out there and get yourself something to start scrying with.